Hello, hello, and welcome back to a new Kubel Space Program video. And as per usual, a nice lift off. And with that, we are heading out into our next mission, our new destination, and a new, maybe, mini series. Or at least, that's what I intend to do with this launch enable. At least. A new, or I, actually, we can actually say this is a continuation of a previous uh, mission. But anyhow, I think I should stop being so vague and rather talk a bit more, go a bit more into specifics. So, in the last few episodes, we have been um, establishing a lot of infrastructure around the MUN and space station, ground bases, refueling outposts, SSTOs, and so on and so forth. And with that being said and done, the MUN is pretty much, well, air quotes, colonized. So we can more or less say that the MUN is over, or the all the missions to the MUN have been successfully completed. And with that, we can head out to our next destination. And actually, I've already shown a picture of this craft in the previous episode as a small spoiler, so you already could guess or know where we're going. So after having reached low Earth, low Earth orbit, well, I, I think I've watched too many um, real space flight feeds in the last couple of days. Anyway, so after having reached low Kerbin orbit, um, we have. Oh, I, I did a small maneuver note just to make sure that we are in a good position for an encounter, and then we are performing the escape burn from Kerbin. Um, in multiple steps since you saw earlier the craft that we're using has two nuclear engines and two nuclear engines do not provide a too too much thrust so our thrust to weight ratio is um, well I think around po 0.2 or something so it's not that terrible but still could be better but uh, in order to increase efficiency and just does not it doesn't really make sense having a ridiculously long burn almost around half the planet just to escape it so yeah efficiency sake and yeah anyways so with that being said we have raised our orbit above the height of the MUN so we can now drag an, a new maneuver node at the periapsis for our final kind of boost burn and uh, with that last burn, we'll leave the sphere of influence off Kubin and head straight to Joule. Exactly, if you haven't guessed it already, we're going to Joule with our mission. So, with our mission, I haven't even talked about the mission, even though we are three minutes into the video. I guess it's a new record. Um, so, we are sending out uh, a bunch of satellites to Joule. A bunch, like really a lot of satellites, an entire communications relay network. So exactly, but it's a bit. Um, I should say that I already have constructed something. Um, I've been thinking about a video that kind of resembled a SpaceX Starlink launch in, in a certain way, and from this video, I actually took inspiration. Let's actually, well, my plan is to go to Joule and work around the Joule system in the future as a new mini-series one can say and we do need some more or some better communications so that's why we have this craft here and that's why we're doing this mission in the first place so I thought let's combine my two ideas and instead of doing a quote-unquote Starlink launch or just satellite relay launch to the MUN Let's actually do that to the dual system because that makes a lot more sense. Speaking of the dual system, here we're um, here we are in the dual system after a nice gravity capture by um, flyby from Leith, and now we are in a high elliptical orbit, and we can deploy the very first satellite. So this very first satellite, the largest of all the satellites that we have, is going to go into a high and highly eccentric, uh, ellip no, eccentric, sorry, eccentric orbit around um, Joule. So we are here approaching the, well, what is it, like 80 degree mark of inclination. So with that we have a very highly elliptic, uh, eccentric orbit. Oh darn it, not elliptic. Highly eccentric orbit around Joule. That's the first satellite done. 
Now, after a few small, well actually one small correction burn, we are now um, at Tylo, well at least in the gravity well of Tylo, and well this looks like not really a good encounter if you're trying to get into, you know, you usually aim for low periapsis flybys in order to burn at the kind of as close as possible to the gra gravitational body to reduce the um, kind of the fuel consumption. However, this time we are burning actually. I'm burning into an orbit. I'm going to say that already. Um, we are circular. Well, we're just decelerating into an orbit up here in high space above Tyler, which is not really efficient. But you'll see in just a second why we're doing that. As for this craft itself, um, as you've seen it already, we have eight. Eight? No, not eight. Why? Well, I, I can't really count. I guess no. Um, Twelve small satellites, then four medium satellites, and one large satellite. Deploy. Uh, speaking of satellites, here we're deploying one of the medium satellites. However, um, there is some debris floating around, and we actually and accidentally damaged one of the. Well, the satellite that was right below it, the one small satellite, and we'll go back to this satellite or this. A uh, small little problem in just a second because, well, this will not really cre create an issue, but still we'll, ha we'll have to deal with it at a later date. Speaking of uh, this medium-ish satellite, um, about the, the reasoning of all those satellites also. So first of all, we're going, going to raise our um, apaps, uh, periapsis so that we are in a high, more or less circular orbit. And Next up, we are going to. We were checking out the satellite, as you can see here. So the relay antenna is broken, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of this one satellite, <laughs> as you can see here. So yeah, but anyways, we are now um, adjusting our orbit. We're reducing our periapsis even further, so that in order to lower it to a better height for the other set, for the other satellites to deploy them. Since I think now it's a good time to talk about the constellation itself. So the idea is that we have, like I said, three sets. Well, not that, like I said, but we have three sets of four satellites, four small satellites, and four medium satellites, and one large satellite. So the idea is that each of the major moons around Joule gets one medium satellite, like you saw already and four of the small satellites. Each kind of, uh, the four small satellites in a rather low orbit and the medium satellite in a medium, medium to high orbit. And with that we will, since the small satellites have the smallest antenna, they can communicate with each other and out to the medium satellite. And by the way, we have here the, the deployment of all four satellites. Yes, like I already said, one of the satellites, the one on the um, lower left, is has no antenna, so we're just doing a deorbit burn in order to just get rid of the mass from the deployment ship. And yeah, I mean that that's pretty much it. And we're going to crash it into Tyler. Everything else is a regular deployment. Um, well, just getting all satellites into a approximately this, uh, roughly the same orbit. And uh, with that being said, we are planning our next intercept going to Val. So like I said, or tr was trying to say earlier, we are going to, we're visiting all the major moons, like all the major moons, not moon, moons, of Jules, so that's Tylo, Leith and Val, not in that order, but rather Tylo, Val and Leith are going out from the outside in, and we're deploying the medium, uh, medium satellites in a high, high-ish orbit, then four small satellites in a low-ish orbit. And back to the idea, I know I've been repeating myself, um, the small satellites communicate with whatever is on the surface or in low orbit around that body, and they kind of send their signal to the medium satellite in a high orbit, and the satellite in a high orbit, like, uh, this, yes, this medium satellite in a high orbit sends the signal to the large satellite in a high eccentric orbit around Joule, the very very first one. 
because well the medium satellites do have connection at uh, do have barely connection to the KSC or just to Kerbin generally but this might as well just be because of the position of Joule and Kerbin itself so that's not a guarantee so that's why we brought the big large satellite now we have here a beautiful deployment with a spinning mothership or deployment ship with that we get uh, we can clear all the satellites without any effort switching to all of them activating SAS and deploying solar panel and the radio antenna for communication and power generation yes I know a solar panel is not really too efficient and too good at generating power out around a jewel but we just need enough power to mm, kind of not lose any power during operations. The small amount of SAS control that we are using is we have a battery and this can be regenerated during long time warp phases. So that, that's why I opted actually for a small uh, solar panel and it's smaller and more compact. Now here we are, we have completed all of the four um, orbits again. This time, well, like, like this time actually four, previously there were only three. And now we're heading to our last destination for the small satellite deployment, Leith. And again, same procedure, medium to, well actually high orbit, then we're going to deploy a medium satellite, and then I'm going to use this medium satellite and fire up its engine. And this time actually, we're starting to burn towards, quote unquote, towards inclination changes. And the reason for that being is actually why this is more of a continuation or just expansion of a previous mission missions. And that is because if you guys can remember last year, <laughs> 2020, where we built and sent a single launch space station to Leith. We actually continue more or less from this video and the follow-up to that actually the SSTO well Leith SSTO not SSTO to Leith but just from Leith up and down um, live stream which is docked to the space station so and the space station actually always had connection or can is able to have connection to the KSC with its large antenna so that's why I went with the satellite like with the medium satellite into a polar orbit since we do have already something in a equatorial orbit even though it is in low orbit we still have kind of just to increase the amount of coverage a bit more and reliability and I thought it, it would be a good change of uh, change of mission so now on to the last satellite deploy deployment uh, we're deploying all four satellites, again. Um, this time actually a periapsis and sadly it is way too dark so that's why we're just immediately skipping to the uh, map view. You can see now reducing the, well, reducing all the orbits more or less. Um, I'm not quite sure how good you can read the numbers actually in the lower left corner of the individual shots, so that's why we're actually going to use one of the um, actual footages and we're going to zoom in onto the lower corner just to tell you guys you have to look at this period and it has to be the same for all satellites and with that you have a stable satellite connect uh, sa satellite constellation anyways we still have one last satellite left if you can remember one of the medium satellites and I decided um, to just smack it into a low cu low cubit orbit. Well, no, low joule orbit in order to have something in the very proximity of a joule. Um, the reason for that is there is no particular reason, quite honestly. But the main reason being more or less for the satellite. Uh, the main reason is the same as for the satellite in general. It has just it should connect and uh, relay information within the dual system and now we're actually to the we're now at the last stage of the mission more or less actually showing the relay that we've built so starting here with lathe we can see one um, relay medium relay network in the uh, satellite in the polar orbit and the full in low orbit here the same for val and the same for Tylo. Well, the only thing with Tylo is that we have only three medium satellite, uh, small satellites, 
and one large satellite here in high um, polar orbit around Joule. Now if we activate the um, communication lines you can actually see how this looks like. So the two yellow yellow lines are A from the large satellite to the GSC obviously as planned and the second one is from the Lathe space station and as you can see it's blinking all the time during time warp that's when it's uh, obstructed by Lathe so that's why having another like a really dedicated communication satellite with a large dish was so important. Um, you can also see those red lines from all the medium satellites from all the bodies that uh, is like I already mentioned there's a good possibility that during certain time periods you can already communicate with the medium. With that being said the mission is concluded and I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time Spaceship signing out. The apocalypse.